Hi there, I am Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and this is Office Hours. So if you're here and you're just joining us and you've never seen these before, what we do is we ask questions right here in the chat and I'll be able to answer them live. So from time to time, I'll look over here and what that is is me checking the chat to see your questions and answer them. Today, we're gonna go over a shot that's really pretty tricky. I I regularly check our forums and on the Boris FX forums, we had a case where a user had a shot that just should have been easily trackable, but wasn't. Now, I, I made a couple of suggestions before I saw the shot. You know, I said, hey, you probably need to switch to CPU tracking from GPU because there's probably a lot of similar texture and you probably need to check for the lens and see if there's a curve. And there were both of those things and that did make the shot harder to track. But I kind of want to talk about how we tracked this shot because there's just not a lot of texture to track. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. I see folks are already in the chat and talking. Thank you very much. Definitely make sure that you tune in. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and cut over and show you my shot. And let's show what we're talking about. All right. So I have this shot here. I'm going to turn it off and show you the original. All right. So this is our original shot and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty tricky. It's, it's a, it's, what is it? It's, it's a lady kind of sitting in the middle of the screen and let's put this on, let's put this on half res. So she's sitting in the middle of this, in this, um, in this hallway and there's a pan happening and let's just hit play here so we can see what's going on. And what you'll see is this hallway is panning just really not very, not very quickly. All right, well, that should be an easy track. Like that should be really easy. He wanted to put texture on the wall. So what we did is we did put texture on the wall. Um, I did a little track and we put this texture on the wall in a way that we could see. Now, the problem with this, let's just put that on full res. The problem with this is in order to get this texture on the wall, we really had to cheat quite a bit. And I, I say that a lot, right? I say, you know, we're cheating in Mocha. And we really are. For this shot, there was not a lot of texture to grab. So what we had to do is we had to just find one wall and link everything to it. And then from that one wall, we're able to extrapolate the data. And let's talk a little bit about how that works. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Mocha. If we were doing from this, this from scratch, and we can do this from scratch, um, what I would do is I would type in Mocha over here in my effects, or I would go to effect you know, Boris FX Mocha and get Mocha. Or if I were in Nuke, I would hit tab and type in Mocha. Same thing for Silhouette. I would look for my Mocha node. I'm not, not, yeah, same thing in Silhouette, same thing in Fusion. Okay, so depending on what you're in, you're gonna need to either find your node or find your effect and apply it to whatever clip you have. In this case, we're in After Effects. So we're gonna go ahead and apply it like an effect. So drag and drop right onto our background. Now, what this will do is this will read from our timeline. Go ahead and turn this texture overlay off. All right, so we're gonna launch Mocha. And I wanna show you a couple of things about this shot. So let's just scroll through this timeline here. There we are. You can see it's a pretty simple move. It's still at the beginning. There's a little camera push in and then it's still at the end. Should be easy peasy, but we've got all these reflections on the wall from this window because this paint is eh, semi-gloss, right? And a lot of reflections down here on the um, bottom. Now I see a question over here. Why does GPU acceleration in on B by default usually give more errors? Okay, it's like this. In order to get um, GP process, GPU processing to work, it's using a, um, a bit of a math algorithm that skips steps. And sometimes when you skip those math steps, um, you end up with an error. A lot of times you don't because a lot of times the texture is, some, is, is different enough that it can find the texture again. But if you're basically narrowing your GPU acceleration, you're narrowing your, um, your math data set um, in order to get a speed increase, sometimes that speed increase can mean that it finds a similar piece of texture and it thinks that that is the right piece of texture from say like a corner over here and it thinks that this is the new texture, even though it's not. So it'll jump or it'll skip or it won't be able to find the location. Now, in some cases, you can change that a little bit if, for example, um, you change your search area. So you can increase your search area here 
to have it look in a larger area, or you can change your angle and zoom to have it look in a larger area. Still, if you have a similar texture, GPU processing is essentially skipping steps, and that step skipping is what increases your speed, but also increases your amount of errors. I hope that makes sense. All right. Now, you can see there's a couple of things about this shot that are going to interfere with tracking. So first things first, let's look. Uh-oh, I see black bars on the side of my screen. Now, these black bars, I'm going to go ahead and switch to where I'm picturing picture here for a second so you can see while I'm talking. Okay, these black bars here, okay, these are a problem. When you are tracking inside of Mocha, you want to make sure that you have cropped out these black bars. So what I want you to see over here in our layout is that we have a clip tab, lens tab, and a track tab. In the clip tab, what we're going to do is we're going to just crop in these yellow dotted lines. And what that will do is that will say, hey, I don't want you to look at these black bars. Don't look at them. Okay, just ignore it. So now when I go to my track tab, they're gone. So now when we track, we will not have that data adulterating our other data, which is to say contaminating our other data. All right. Now, one more problem in here. I'm looking at this. Let's go and check our CPU settings. So let's go to preferences. Let's go to GPU. And you can see that I have disabled GPU processing. Okay. Now I only did that because the, the texture on this wall is so similar. And it, this is the same problem you run into on grass and things like that. Um, if you have a texture that's so similar that it can't differentiate the change, you need to turn off GPU processing. All right. So let's hit OK. If you wanted to turn GPU on, you would do that. If you want to turn GPU off, you would do that. Make sure that once you change GPU settings, you restart. Now, I do see another question in the chat. I think it's not related. It's not related, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Hi, Mary. When doing beauty removes, is it better to do it in the Remove tab in Mocha or to track the clean object in the composite program with tracking data? Um, it really depends on what kind of beauty remove you're doing. If you are doing something that has occlusions, it's better to use like a corner pin and a, um, you know, or a uh, insert and a patch. And if you are doing a beauty remove that doesn't have any shadows or light or occlusions over the top, you can just use the remove tab. All right. And render that back to your timeline. I think that answers the question. I think that's what I was being asked. Okay. So let's get back to the shot for a second. Now with this shot, okay, girl sitting in the middle of the room should be no problem. Okay, but if you look at these edges here, you can see that there is a slight curve happening to the lines. Now that is a real problem if we are going to track in Mocha. And here's why that's a real problem. If we're tracking and there is a lens warp, okay, the track is going to be really accurate towards the middle of the shot where the lens warp is not as severe. But as we get out towards the edges, that lens warp curves our data. And that data curve needs to be accounted for or our tracking data will be incorrect. So how do we solve for that? Well, we have a lens tab. And in the lens tab inside of Mocha, you can solve for a lens. And we can do that in a couple of ways. One of the ways that we can do that, excuse me, my eyes itching. OK, one of the ways we can do that is we can say locate lines and Mocha will go ahead and grab every line that it thinks needs to be straight, and then you can tell it whether or not that's accurate. Now, this is not a really good place to, um, to do that, so let's clear the calibration, and let's go all the way back here to frame one. And we have way more lines we can see at frame one, so let's go ahead and locate lines here, all right? And what we'll do is we will trace all of these lines. Now, if we don't want to use the locate lines option and we don't want to come in here and we don't want to hit like in for new line and trace the lines, okay, and in for new line and trace the lines, what we can do, let's just, let's just uh, reset lines. Let's go to the end and yeah, okay, perfect. Now, what we can do is we can use the splines. So we're gonna instead, let's just go ahead and select splines and let's, excuse me, Go to our lens tab. Let's say use splines. Okay. And so now I can take an X spline and I can draw an X spline down the line just like that. And I can take another X spline and draw down the line. All right. So this is good if you want to draw a line, but there's not a lot of good lines to find. Okay. So 
you can sort of infer lines like this blurry edge here. I know that I can see where that line is, but Mocha might not see where that line is, but I can because I'm a person, you know, and I have, I have a little bit more discernment than a computer. All right, so same for that. So what we end up doing, I didn't do right. Let's go back to our lens tab, use splines, thank you. Here we go. Um, I clicked back on my lens tab. Let's keep making our lines just like this. Anyway, I have a better discernment of what the lines should look like. So what I can do is I can select these lines and I can use them for calibration. Now I'm gonna use this line here and I'm also going to use this line here. Now we don't recommend you use organic lines for this kind of thing. If you use organic lines for this, uh, well, you're gonna end up with a problem. And the reason for that is Mocha does not necessarily understand, um, doesn't understand how to parse out a straight line with a tree. This is another reason why splines can come in handy because you can kind of get the curve of the tree with a spline where you would not be able to do that with locate lines. So let's select all of these lines and let's go ahead and use a calibration. So let's let's decide what kind of calibration this is. Now, is it an anamorphic lens? Is it a one parameter or a two parameter? All right, anamorphic, y'all recognize it when you see it. It's a very oblong sort of um, odd, odd lens warp. Uh, this is not anamorphic. It would be one parameter because it's not a fisheye. Fisheye is two parameters. So one parameter is one spherical distortion and two parameter is two spherical distortions. So a fisheye is two parameter and a one parameter is a single lens distortion like this. So what we can do is we can turn our, our grid on. Well, let's, let's, let's uh, calibrate first. Let's hit calibrate, okay? And now we can turn our grid on and you can see that it's calibrated for my lens curve. You see that my grid went from being flat to round and we can also render to see if this looks flat. So if it looks flat, if these lines look straight now, we can safely go ahead and, um, and track. So I'm going to take all of these layers and I'm going to drop them into a new folder. Now that they're in a new folder, what I can do is I can start tracking. So in the, in the Mocha software, what you wanna do is you always wanna track um, by adjusting anything in the clip tab that you need to adjust first, like those black bars, then adjusting things in the lens tab because we work left to right. You wanna adjust the lens before you do any tracking. And the reason for that is if you do not adjust before you do any tracking, um, everything you track is gonna be warped and you're gonna have to retrack it. And that's no fun for anyone. So definitely, Solve for any lens before you track, and then you can track. All of these, I'm gonna just go ahead and hide and put them away. All right, and now I can start with a track. So there's a couple of problems with this. If I if I come into the shot and I try to track this whole wall, for example, um, because there's not a lot of texture to track, that's also kind of going to be a problem because we have a door here. But if we tried to track just this little area here, just this one wall, which we know is a plane, we're still gonna have a problem and I'll show you why. It's kind of aggravating actually, but I'll show you why. All right, so if I come in here and I wanna make sure that I grab the entire wall, notice how I'm grabbing the edge of the door and the edge of the wall. And notice too how the shape is now curved because of the lens warp, that's good. But if I try to track translation, scale, rotation, shear and perspective in here, watch, we're gonna have a disaster. And we shouldn't, right? This should actually just track really nicely by all accounts. But if I go ahead and hit track forwards, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a problem where this does not track as nicely over time. It's gonna start to slip, all right? I'm actually gonna just jump ahead a little bit because a lot of this is still until it isn't. Okay, so let's hit track forwards and let's talk through it. So a lot of this is still before it isn't. And what happens is when we use perspective on this, because we have all of this reflection, even though we've got these nice handprints on the wall, which I imagine are there from either little kids or previous filming where somebody was running along putting their hands on the wall. Um, what you wanna do <laughs> is you wanna be able to account for that texture, but this reflection coming from the window is not going to be moving at the same level as the wall, okay? And then if we don't track that reflection, so if we take this shape down and we start tracking here, now we don't have enough texture to get a good track on this wall, even though we should, right? Because it's a really high res image and it's just not. I mean, I try tracking this 
with translation only. I tried tracking it with perspective. I tried tracking it with, you know, um, shear only, trying to get past the problems. Um, and it just, over time, does not hold on. So I did a couple of tricks. And I want to kind of show you what those tricks are just, just as soon as I show you how this is messing up. I want to give this a little bit of time. Now, notice we are tracking a lot slower than we normally track today. And why is that? That's because we turned off GPU tracking. And GPU tracking is a lot faster. All right. But let's just scroll through here for a second. So you can already tell that that's slipping. Like already, you can see that that's not looking right. It's wobbly. Let's just zoom in so you can see. It's wobbly. It's not sticking to the edge. We've got this vibration happening up here in the corner. Um, and it's just not holding on like it should. So there's a couple of things that I tried. Now, I, I hear a question here. Would maybe try making a track of a non-coplanar floor and that window in the background, um, would, would that help you? And I'm glad you asked that because, yes, it would. So I'm going to just save this and close it. I'm, I'm going to show you what I ended up doing. Um, rather than just walk you through the tedious, slow process of all of that. So let's go ahead and launch Mocha. All right. So here in this shot, I did a couple of things. All right. Now, one of the things that I did. Let's just turn the right wall off here so it's not confusing. And let's turn our tracker shape off for a second as well. Okay. So... You can see the first thing we did actually, because I realized even when I'm tracking, she's casting a shadow on the floor and it's a super soft shadow. It's really soft, but it's actually way bigger than it looks. And for me, I didn't really notice it until I started scrolling through. And you can see that it wobbles a little bit on the floor, right? And then you can see how much of her shadow is actually being cast soft out from her. So what we did is we did a holdout on her and all of her shadows to make sure that we wouldn't grab that. And then I tracked this entire section of the wall over here. And when I tracked this whole section of the wall, it actually did, I actually did not track anything but translation and scale only. I tried tracking rotation, shear, and perspective. It was a bad call. I ended up with wobbles all over the place. And since this is just a simple zoom in, we can get away with this kind of work. So what we ended up with was a track that looks like this. And I'll show you how this looks. But this tra track still wasn't perfect. It was still slipping a little bit because I was only tracking translations and scale, which, no, that's not great. All right, so what we did is this became a whole adjust track shot. Um, I even tried tracking the right wall over here, but I actually ended up failing tracking the white right wall over and over and over again. So if we want to have texture on all this wall, and we do, what we have to do is this really tedious process where we um, adjust the track over and over and over again. But because we don't have to do a crazy um, four corner pin correction, and we really wouldn't want to do a four corner pin correction because we can't see our four corners. So if you see how this warps as it moves off screen, we don't know where our corners are. You know, we would really only ever be able to sort of guesstimate what this corner is. And that's not going to work. So what we did is we instead, or I say we, but it's the royal we. What I did instead is that I zoomed out to where I could see all of my shot here. I could see my shape and I could see my track. And I created a adjust track based off of this. So what we'll do is we'll just reset this adjust track really quick. And let me go ahead and move the surface exactly where I would like it to be. So I like to have my surface tool where it needs to be if I'm going to do an adjust track. We're going to set a single translation adjust track point for this, okay? And we're going to select it and set this as our reference frame. And then we're going to go through our shot and we're going to look for where it slips off and where our last good frame is. So. There's an animation that happens here. And what we want is we want to stop right at the end of that animation. And then that's going to be our adjust track point, just like this. All right. And so now it's still. And if we need any more corrections, we can correct over time. But that is now 
our corrected track for this wall. Now notice I left this wall and this wall in the same shape. I did that, I mean, in the same, um, the same plane, it's because they are on the same plane and I just wanna make sure that when we are applying things to this wall, um, when we're actually applying things to this wall, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that uh, we can use the same corner pin to apply the data. Now I see a question here, which is, when I track ground level, it's actually moved. Why did that happen? What did you do incorrect? Um, well, if you are tracking ground, the ground just doesn't have a lot of good data to track. So here's what I did for all the rest of the planes in this shot. What we did is let's just turn this off for a second and let's duplicate this. We're going to duplicate this layer. We're going to call it right wall new. Okay. So I only have, remember, I only have the translation and scale data for this. So that means that I can effectively move this um, corner pin everywhere and still get the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this corner pin right over here. All right, and I'm going to just make a new corner pin for this side. All right. So this is my right wall. All right. Now what I'll do is I'll go to my right wall and we'll go to our adjust track. We'll reset our adjust track. All right. And now same thing. We're going to make sure. Actually, let's go to the first frame. Yeah, of the animation here. All right. There we go. So now what we can do is we can say, hey, let's make a new translation point, select it, set a reference frame. Okay, and now what we'll do is correct it over time. And again, we want to make sure that we're on the last bit of animation, just like that. All right, so now we end up with a track for that wall. All right, so I see a question here, which is, um, so when I tracked the ground level, why did it move? The reason the ground level moved is because there was a shadow cast on the floor. If you try to cast, if you try to track the ground on this shot um, and there's a shadow, that shadow is going to move the texture. Now, the next question I see is, sorry, I missed it. How did you curve the surface corner pin? I curved the surface corner pin by solving for the lens first right here in the lens tab. Okay, so... Um, so we solve for the lens first, and you can catch that back at the beginning of this, um, this talk, if you like. And I want to kind of finish tracking this because I want to show how to apply this data into a new comp. All right. Um, you can also, there's going to be several ways to get this data back in, but one of the questions that we asked on the forums was how to do this. Now, I want to talk about um, a five-day deal we have right here. So... In our pre-launch giveaway, we have a, um, we're working with five day deal um, to, uh, to give away a suite of Boris effects. So what you need to do is you need to go to fivedaydeal.com slash partner slash Boris effects. Okay. And over there, you're going to want to type in your name and your email and enter your 10 day giveaway. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is on five day deal, we do have an optics giveaway. Okay. So you want to use the promo code five day deal to capture these savings. Okay. So make sure that you join the giveaway and check out five day deal. The other thing I wanted to talk about is this is the forum post I was talking about. All right. And on our forum post here, what we want to do is we want to make sure that you are going to the forums so that you can see how we're interacting. All right. This shot was a problem shot. They sent us the shot and we looked at it and then we sent them a response. And, um, and, and I also said, join us today at office hours to watch. So if you're having trouble, please definitely go over to the forums and we'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, now back to our shot here. All right, so right here, we've got our lovely shot. And that corner pin eh, does not quite look correct because we're going to move it over here. There we go. All right. That corner pin looks more correct to me. Nice. All right. Now, 
what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this and we're going to make one more adjustment. So let's take this left wall. Let's duplicate it. Let's call this floor. And we would do the same thing. So now we have our new corner pin. We're just going to make sure that we apply this to our floor just like this. And we can actually, let's reset the surface. Here's a good, this is a good time to reset the surface. So notice I right clicked here and I hit reset on the surface. And that's because if you looked, my, my points were all messed up. They just didn't look like they aligned properly. Uh, my little corners, my little edges here uh, were inverted. We don't wanna end up with something like that. Like you don't wanna have an inverted corner pin. So instead, we just reset it. Now we can apply it right here on the floor. All right, and now we can go back to our adjust track, reset all. All right, and now we can do the same thing. We can set a point, select. All right, we're going to set a reference frame. And we can even just set a new keyframe here. And let's adjust this down just like that. All right. So that's our new floor. All right. Now, you may have to do things like scale and rotation to get a better, um, a better adjust track on some of these. Like this wall probably could stand to use another scale point. Um, but in general, this is the workflow. The workflow is go back and forth until you get a floor, a wall, and a left wall, okay? And so what we can do is we can now take these corner pins and we can apply them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply these actually inside of our shot. All right, so let's save this and let's close it. All right, so how do we apply this data? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can apply this data. Like we can, let's just duplicate this really quick, load it up here. One of, the, one of the ways that we can apply this data is we can say, hey, I want you to render this undistorted back into After Effects. So here's my undistorted and distorted, okay? So you can see that knocks the curve out of the wall. Okay, if I have an undistorted plate, I can apply a corner pin by exporting my corner pin data. So I can go down here to my tracking data. I can create some tracking data and I can apply that to a layer and composite it in and then rewarp everything. That is kind of a pain to do. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the insert module to render this back to the timeline. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I have a corner pin that needs to fit with my warp. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's turn this off, let's turn this on. Let's talk about how we apply this data. And we'll just launch Mocha here. I wanna show you that what we've done is we've done some wall roto and an insert. I'm gonna show you how to do all that from scratch, but first I wanna show you one more thing. I'm gonna duplicate this texture and bring it to the top. We have here this little texture. I got this texture, I'm just gonna um, fit this, perfect. I got this texture from Pexels and all it is is a wispy sort of ink um, in, uh, in water effect. I'll show you what the original footage looked like the original footage looks like this. All right, so wait, where'd you go? All right, the original footage looks like this. It's just a bunch of wispy ink and powder and water that was filmed with a camera. And I'm gonna use that as a creepy effect on the wall. In order to use that as a creepy effect on the wall though, I came in here and I applied several things. So I applied a hue and saturation and an inversion. So all we did was take all the saturation out and inverted it. All right, so now I have this nice creepy texture that I can put on the wall. All right, now the thing about that texture is once I have that comp, I can pre-comp it, I can use it anywhere in my comp. Now, if you were doing a node tree, what you would do is, of course, you would put a merge node at the end of that, and that would be your pre-comp. But After Effects works differently, so you have to package things. So 
just if you are a node-based compositor, just ignore this pre-comping aspect and just think of it as a merge node or a composite node or whatever your favorite compositor uses as a, you know, a, com a combination point in your tree, okay? So once we have this, we can now apply this, okay? So what I do is I'll take my left wall here and let's launch Mocha. And what we've done is we can just have our left wall and we can, let me get rid of this roto here, delete. Okay, so I've got my left wall track and it looks really nice. And what I've done is I've gone to my insert clip and instead of having none, I selected my insert layer as my insert clip. All right, to define an insert layer, all you do is over here in your module renders, you say, I want my insert layer to be texture, okay? So that's how you define your insert layer. Once you've defined your insert layer and say, here's my left wall, okay? And now what I can do is I can say, okay, I want Roto for this. So let's turn this to none for a second and let's zoom out. If I want to create a nice Roto on this wall, let's turn our surface tool off and use a solid tool, which is this little rectangle here. All right, now, so we've got this little tool that we've made a little square with. We're gonna use the add to X spline tool. So this is your add rectangular X spline. Here we are. Now we have a nice rectangular shape right here. All right, so this is gonna be my roto for this shot. We're gonna call this left wall roto. Okay, we're gonna select left wall roto and we are going to link it to left wall. Now, of course, it's not gonna match 100%. Uh-oh, why is that? Well, that's because when we linked to track, we didn't link to the adjusted track. So check this checkbox when you're linking to an adjusted track. Now, this will link to our track and we can do any hand corrections that we need, just like this. All right, so that's lovely. Now that's our roto for our wall. So what I can do is I can take my left wall and I can either in the insert tab, I can either use a specific layer for my insert. Don't actually like to do that. I like to apply it in the effect. And that's because sometimes if you use the insert um, and you use the layers inside of Mocha and you use it as a composite render inside of your host software, Sometimes the blending modes can be a little funny. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit close. And I'm going to say, hey, inside of this, what I want you to do is I want you to apply the mat, okay? And we're gonna use the visible layer of left wall roto, okay? And so now when we are applying our, our oh, hold on. <laughs> I turned off my insert layer. It's like, why isn't that rendering? It's not rendering because I turned the insert clip off. Insert layer, here we are, save, close. All right, so now this renders back to our wall. Inside of apply mat, I can go ahead and make sure that only left wall roto is visible. And now I have this nice, lovely composite. And what I can do is I can even feather this, like let's say we wanna feather this like five pixels, maybe 15 to sort of have it get smoky in the edges. All right, now this is rendered back to my timeline. Now this is 4K, so it's just not gonna play in real time. But this is how we would then be able to switch out any texture we wanted inside of this shape. So if I wanted to make a new texture in here, like if I wanted to just put like text across the top of this that said like, you know, this is a test. All right, and I just put this right here. If I go back into my hallway, it's back on my timeline. So whatever changes you make to that corner pin, well, to that pre-comp are gonna be populated into the corner pin and they're going to be populated into your comp using the lens warp and wherever you put it. And the nice thing about that is, let's just come in here and launch Mocha. All right. The nice thing about that is I can move this anywhere I want. So if I don't like the positioning of this left wall here, let's just scroll this down. If I don't like where this corner pin is, I'm gonna turn my surface tool on and I'm gonna just move this around just like this. All right, and now I'm gonna hit save and close. And now it's wherever I put my layer. 
just over and over. And I just want to make sure that my left wall is off. There we go. All right. So we can really, really use a what you see is what you get workflow to get really nice results. So I'll just turn my right wall on over here. Let's just go ahead into my texture and turn off. This is a test. Let's just delete that. All right. So you end up with something that looks like this. And let's just scroll through. I can see my roto shape needs some love, but whatever. All right. So that is how I would do this shot. The shot was pretty challenging. I'm just going to cut back for a second. All right. So this shot was actually pretty challenging. A user was, I think, having a real hard time with this, and um, and I totally understand their frustration. This is a deceptively tricky shot. It shouldn't be. It should be just an easy to track shot. But that lens curve, the edges, the um, lack of texture, the reflections all over the walls, the soft shadows everywhere, the subtle lighting, the real just not a lot of detail to find even in a 4K image because it's so... Um, sfumato, you know, it's so um, moody. Uh, that's a problem. So we want to make sure that when we are looking at shots like this, we don't necessarily sell ourselves short by saying, ah, oh, I can track that in like a day. Well, it took me probably about an hour and a half to figure out this shot. And that's like a long time for me. So I would recommend if you run into shots where you have a problem to jump over to our forums and then make sure that you ask us questions because we're happy to answer them. We're here all the time. Um, if you guys have any questions about this, please go ahead and let me know in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, but I think that's about it I had for today. So I'm, if anybody has any questions, let me know and I'll wait a second and uh, answer them in the chat. All right, well, I don't see any questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let y'all go. Thank you for tuning in and I really appreciate it. If you guys liked this, please like and subscribe, hit that like button. We like those like buttons. Um, that'll go ahead and let you know when our next office hours is. As usual, uh, if you have any questions, email me at maryp at boriseffects.com and I will be happy to answer anything that you send my way. Now, please do also go to our forums. That's boriseffects.com and you can go to community and Boris, and you can either go to the Silhouette Forum or the Mocha Forum. Um, you can find stuff about Continuum there. Everybody's there to help and answer your questions. So make sure that you're using that. Don't forget to take advantage of the uh, five-day deal. Um, for optics and also for the potential to win a Boris Effect suite. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.